Hey everybody, John Millen with Benefit Hackers on my way home. Want to talk briefly about a, a process experience we're going through as a company. And it's part of our rebranding, re-imaging, re-laming, re-coloring, you name it. It's all that stuff we're doing. Um, and we're going through a process now with a consultant where we're laying out a new website. And part of that process is they said in one of the meetings a few weeks ago, they said, well, what are your... What's your mission statement? What are your core values? What's your value proposition? Those types of things. And we're like, uh, what do you mean? <laughs> like, what are you talking about? Like, well, what's your, what do you, what do you stand for? Like, who are you guys? Like, what's your core values? Essentially is what they were asking. And we're like, uh, and we started rattling off like random stuff and like, okay, we probably need to create that. Now I'll be honest, uh, years ago through corporate America and other things, People have talked about you need to have a mission statement and it's like, you know, a couple sentences and it goes on a wall somewhere. And I used to think it was a bunch of BS. It's like it's just a statement. Someone says we got to do it and it's no big deal. What I'm what I'm finding, though, is it actually is a really big deal if you take if you take your company culture and your mission seriously and it doesn't mean if you don't have one, you're not serious. I'm not saying that because we've been in business 18 years and we didn't have anything we could really point to. It's something we just recently are, are getting solid on. So I'm not saying that at all. Um, but because we're ser- because we're serious, because we we're getting very clear on where we're good and where we're not good, it's it's bringing that clarity and focus into it. And so when they said we need to create a a core value statement. We were like, okay, what do you mean? Like, what are what are values? And they said, well, like people that work for your company, what do you want them to believe? Like, what are some key things that you want them to believe that would be a good fit for you to hire them? I was like, oh, okay. And look, like, who are you guys as 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 people in the company? And then also, what types of organizations or people do you want to attract to help? Because if those align, the values align, then that might be a good fit. If the values are opposite, there may be friction and it may not be worth that relationship. And I thought that whole discussion and process was really interesting because years ago, if someone says, who's your target client? I'd say anyone with an employee, like I'll figure out a way. Right. I don't care if they have two employees or figure out a way. I don't care if it's a, if it's 6,000 employees. Hey, if we can get a meeting. Let's go try them. Let's try to get them. And that was something we did before. And just being in business for a while, I wish I would have figured this out sooner. That would be my advice. Um, you may want to do this sooner rather than later is figure out who you are, what are your values as a company and as, and as individuals, like it's because p- company are people and hone in on what are you really good at? Who do you like to work with? Who don't you like to work with? And don't be afraid to exclude certain people in your, in your company or who you serve. And at first it's really scary because most of us, us included, can have a a scarcity mentality like, oh my gosh, there's only so many companies, so many things we can do and so many people I can hire and there's limitations. And one of the things I'm learning in this journey that started in January of this year is when I really attended the Cardone University, Cardone, uh, Grant Cardone's, um, sorry, foggy, Grant Cardone's uh, 10X Growth Con in Miami. And then went to see Russell Brunson at Funnel Hacking Live. It's really opened my eyes about these different topics. And then it just grew from there on different people that we interact with. So it's been an interesting process. So I want to lay out a couple of things that we're finding. One thing I'll say is it if you're gonna if you haven't gone through this process as even as an individual, it doesn't have to be like if you work for a company. And, you know, it's not your company. You can still go through this process. And it's really, I would highly encourage it to create what are your core values. And just as a framework, I'll tell you what we're going through. I am no expert at this, but I've learned a lot doing it, that we have three core values. So I think the key there that I've learned is you want to keep it simple. Like you don't want to have 10 
you may want to maybe one or two it's possible but three you know three four some of that meaningful number and we kind of landed on three it could be four at some point but it's it's a meaningful number not too many you want to think about um if someone says who are you as people and if you had to have people join you on your team whether it's just you or whether you own a company of a thousand employees, what characteristics, how would they think about certain things? So our first one, and I'll share this, this is a little bit work in progress still. So I'm a, I feel a little vulnerable sharing it, but, I, but I'm okay with that because it's part of the process we're going through and it may help other people. And so one of the exercises we had is they, one of our consultants said, you know, when you think of your company and what you do and who you are, what are some words that come to mind? And so that created people th throwing out different words, fun, creative, energetic, um, smart, insightful, you know, whatever they are, um, caring, compassion, it depends on your industry, um, strategic, whatever that is. It could be for you. It could be a good listener, um, patient. So that had a big wide net. And then we narrowed it down. And so our, one of our first draft values is we are experts with empathy. And the, the, the piece under that is we have the expert knowledge to fill in the gaps, but the empathy to meet you where you are. And so that is a result of really thinking through like we we really believe that we are experts in what we do, but we empathize with, with people to meet them where they are. We're not arrogant. We don't have all the answers and we know people need to maybe go on a journey of where, where they are now, where they want to go. And that can mean different things in employee benefits, in human capital, in recruiting and growth. So there's different pieces that means different things. So, I thought, and this was with the help of our consultant, I thought that was really kind of nailed it. We're experts with empathy. We have the expert knowledge to fill in the gaps, but the empathy to meet you where you are. And I thought that was a unique balance of, we, we feel very confident in our abilities, but you got, we will, we'll meet you where you are and help you in that journey. So that was the first one. The second is, um, solution oriented, solution oriented. We have an insatiable passion to create inventive solutions and improve the process. We have an insatiable passion to create inventive solutions and improve the process. So what does that mean? One of the things that as we're being known as benefit hackers, as we kind of started that phrase is hacking is finding better ways, right? Trying to find a, a more efficient, more effective solution, something that works better. And we have, we, we all in the company now have that passion to find new solutions and improve things. So what that does is that tells people, look, if you're comfortable and you just want to stay where you are and you're not interested in new ideas, not that we can't help you, but that's not our, that's what gets us excited. We have, we have a passion for finding new things. Doesn't mean being radical or hugely, highly risky. It just means we have a passion for tr trying different things. And again, meeting you where you are in your process of the company or in your employees or your human capital. So that that's kind of our second, you know, we're solution oriented. Um, the third is engaged educators, engaged ed educators. We don't sell, we educate to ensure our interests are aligned directly with our clients. We don't sell, we educate to ensure our interests are aligned, aligned directly with our clients. What does that mean? We are really big on education. And a lot of the, you, if you've listened or heard or watched videos or, or been a client of ours or seen anything, we say things like, we're not insurance peddlers, we're benefit advisors. Um, we're not captive. We're not, we're not shackled to um, commissions. We're not 
um, reliant on any one carrier. We're we, we very open about that and we're very transparent as well about if anyone asks how we get paid. Like it's not a secret. Um, we're glad to share it. There's no hidden agenda. But big a big part of us is education. And we know this because we have all been burned in the company about not being educated, making a benefit decision and then regretting it. Be like, oh my gosh, if someone would have told me that was a non-embedded deductible, I wouldn't have taken the plan. Because I wouldn't have spent, had a $15,000 deductible because it was non-embedded. So we all have those stories. And so we're really excited about being engaging in our education with our clients. So those are the three, um, experts with empathy, solution-oriented, engaged educators. Um, again, a little bit still work in progress, which is really kind of cool. One of the things I'm doing is asking some feedback of my team. And it's great because I get different feedback. I get different perspective. And, you know, my background is mechanical engineering. So I'm not an English major. I was never that great with words. Sometimes I don't know the difference between compassion and empathy and listening. Um, they sometimes they all mean the same to me, but they don't. And when you're get boiling things down, I'm getting a real good, a real appreciation for the language of words and what they mean. And especially when that word really has a deep meaning for you, then it means more, right? If it's just a word like educate, educator, like that's pretty boring. Like what's an educator? No big deal. Well, when we think of educators or educating, that means something very different to us and it, and it, and it, and it impacts us. When we think of solution, that means a lot because sometimes it takes us hours to find the solution. We don't, we're not just like, okay, here are your choices. You figure out your solution. What choice do you want? Or when we say we're experts, it's because we've, we've stayed late. We've worked hard. We've asked questions. We've pushed back over and over and over. And that has allowed us to learn things that other people might not have learned because they didn't push so hard. They didn't dig as deep. So this has been really fun. It has been a little frustrating as we, you know, everyone has different opinions and people have different meetings. And but you know what, I, I really embrace the process and it'll be fun to look back a year from now or two years or five years. And it'll be interesting and great when we when we bring on new people like we're looking to expand already next year. And as we go from six employees now, um, we were doing three million dollars at the beginning of the year of business. Um, we're going to tally up the notice, the, the total here soon, but it's going to be a lot more than three. We grew a lot this year. Um, but we also added three people. So we went from three to six. Um, so, sorry, went from four to six um, and, and adjusted some things. So next year, we're going to continue to grow. So the, the the plan will be at some point to serve more companies and employees, you know, 10, 15, 20 employees at that point when we're doing 10 or $15 million. Um, but again, the impact is that many more clients helped. So I hope this is helpful. Um, again, my advice is, it can be a painful process, but to, what are your core values? Like, who are you as a person? Even if you work for another company, I think that would be really helpful. So hope that uh, makes some sense. If we can help you in any way, you're always welcome to reach out to me at hackmybenefits.com. And if I can help you, let me know. Thanks.